Well, in contrast, the microbial food web is really kind of an invisible food web. Even though we can see some of the organisms, some large organisms are included in this food web, we really didn't know about this food web, well, really until we began to look at the very tiny little things that live in the ocean, until we developed ultrafiltration techniques, until we really applied electron microscope techniques to the ocean, until we began to be able to figure out pieces of DNA and, and RNA and the genomic material and how it was constructed and begin to compare different sequences in the ocean. Until we really had that molecular look, the invisible microbial food web was really largely unknown to us and what we can't see is very difficult to understand until you develop ways of actually observing and understanding those kinds of organisms. This food web depends a lot on something called dissolved organic matter. And it's just dissolved organic carbon or dissolved organic matter that supplies a pool of energy to bacteria. And bacteria tend to be the major sort of, in a sense, the replacement for phytoplankton, in a sense. So even though the bacteria aren't acting as primary producers, except of course for Prochlorococcus and, and Synecococcus, the cyanobacteria, they're certainly primary producers, but heterotrophic bacteria, things that eat already formed carbon, the dissolved organic carbon, dissolved organic matter, also play a very large role in the microbial food web. Now, where does that dissolved organic carbon come from? It comes from the phytoplankton. And phytoplankton leak dissolved organic carbon, or as they're eaten, dissolved organic carbon gets dissolved into the ocean or as phytoplankton um, through different kinds of processes naturally shed dissolved organic carbon and as other organisms excrete their waste dissolved organic carbon gets put into the ocean and bacteria are there to take it up and as bacteria grow on this dissolved organic matter then other organisms can eat them so in some sense we have uh, even though these are like secondary producers we have primary producers, the, the cyanobacteria, and secondary producers, the heterotrophic bacteria growing on the dissolved organic matter. They form a sort of microbial food source for small zooplankton. And then the small zooplankton themselves can be a food source for larger zooplankton. And in that way, the microbial food web can actually feed into the classical food web. And we'll see how that happens just with an illustration here. The kinds of things that we find in the microbial food webs are things like bacteriovores, things that eat bacteria, and this would be ciliates, and even dinoflagellates. Ciliates are a type of small zooplankton. They're really, if you want to think about a protozoan with lots of hair, you can think of a ciliate. Carnivorous zooplankton that eat the ciliates and eat the dinoflagellates are actually the link from the microbial food web to the classical food web. And other kinds of small photoautotrophs, of course, the cyanobacteria may also play a role in the microbial food web. So here's what this one looks like. So here we see that algae and cyanobacteria and small phytoplankton as well. This does not necessarily exclude things like diatoms that are very small, but certainly the cyanobacteria being on the size scale of bacteria um, are an important part of it. There are other kinds of photoheterotrophs. They use sunlight to be able to uh, fix carbon or, or break down already formed carbon. There are also heterotrophic bacteria that we just talked about. All of these feed on dissolved as well as particulate organic matter. So you see all these pathways from this dissolved pool and particulate pool that are breaking down the organic matter, forming their own size class of producers in a sense and then these are fed upon by small zooplankton really protozoan type zooplankton or protein type zooplankton the nanoflagellates and really these are just like little small organisms little protozoans that eat the bacteria and cyanobacteria they're fed upon by larger sort of protein zooplankton such as the ciliates we just talked about they may also be fed upon by dinoflagellates. Dinoflagellates are what we call mixotrophic because they eat as well as photosynthesize. What a deal that is, huh? 
these ciliates and then diatoms and dinoflagellates are food for the classical food web. So this microbial loop or microbial food web is in a sense also a food source for the classical food web. Sometimes this coupling between the two food webs, between the microbial food web and the classical food web is very strong and sometimes it doesn't exist at all or it's very weak. 